Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Radio Northern Beaches 88.7 and 90.3 FM. This is Wednesday. My name is Melissa and you're listening to the Hummingbird Talks. These talks happen every Wednesday at 11 a.m. And each week I have different guests on we ha- and we speak about a range of topics all about the spirituality, health and wellness space. And they're designed to educate and inspire the everyday person to help them along this journey, um, to fis- facilitate a, a self-awareness, wholeness and completeness on this journey that we call life. So guys, welcome to the Hummingbird Talks and welcome to this week's topic. I've got the beautiful Kylie Johnson with me on, um, on this week. Kylie is the founder of Kylie Johnson Art. She's a single mum. She's a, how else would you describe yourself, Kylie? Hi, Mel. Um, How would I describe myself? So, yes, I'm the single mum. I've got the story behind me with that. And I'm doing my absolute best to bring my beautiful 10-year-old daughter, Jasmine, up in the most positive, mindful way. (laughs) Yes, beautiful. I think that's what most parents are trying to do at this point in time, but they might find it a bit hard or they're not sure where to start. So Kylie has plenty of experience in that and we're going to be talking about her experience with mental health and well-being. We're also going to be talking about a growth mindset and an attitude of gratitude we're also going to talk about different creative ways that you can connect with family as well because that's what Kylie does in her Kylie Johnson art. You've got some activities yeah. that foster a well-being kind of attitude, don't you? Yeah, that's kind of my go-to for a lot of things, definitely for mental health, yeah, so yeah. being creative. Yeah, perfect. Now, yeah. Kylie, just so that people can connect with you or understand where you've come from, do you want to start off by sharing your story? Sure. So, um, gosh, okay, to start, just keeping it fairly brief, I was a model for 20 years and I had this big passion to take off and move to Hong Kong. I was about 25 and I didn't know anyone. I just had a passion and a lot of, well, I look at how I was then now with all my wisdom being older and I go, I had a lot of courage, a lot of self-belief, a lot of gratitude a lot of determination and I made my dreams come true. I followed my heart and I just went for it. It was the best two and a half years of my life. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And that took you right around the world as well. It did, yeah. After Hong Kong, it's very expat orientated. So there was people from all around the world that became very close friends, very entrepreneurial people. There are a few models that I knew, but mostly it was entrepreneurial people that I really connected with and just loved their zest for life. Mm -hmm. Um, We all had that same energy of live life, you know, go for your dreams, work hard, have fun. Um, Yeah, yeah, so that's what I was doing for five years. I ended up going to London and New York and travelling the world, um, meeting up with lots of friends. And then I came back going, no, okay, put your feet on the ground, Kylie, time to sort of come back to reality and and think about settling down. Um, I guess I was around 30. And actually it was year 2000, whatever that was. Um, And then I didn't find love so fast. I finally did find my husband. Um, We were together for eight years, but five years married. Okay. Um, No, sorry, three years married. Um, And, yeah, that was a big big turning point when I had my my daughter. We basically went through IVF and um, we struggled three rounds to try and get my little miracle daughter. So there was a lot of um, love and determination to have my daughter. Um, So that was, you know, challenging in itself. And then the marriage started to sort of crumble, you know, things weren't going so well um, when she was almost three. And then my mother fell very sick and then she passed. So I pretty much divorced, separated and mum passed at the same time. So that was um, from up on that high that I was just talking about. Yeah. What? (laughs) How did I become the single mum? Yeah. How am I? now blessed enough to be living with my father. Yeah. Um, he was married to her for 50 years, so I grew up with this beautiful, you know, dream that that would be me. Yeah. And now here I am still living with my dad. That was in 2012. 
but by choice because I'm super, super blessed and, and grateful and lucky for where I live. We, we have a beautiful place um, and I'm kind of my dad's rock. He's my rock just since mum passed. We're a very close family. Got yeah. two older sisters. Yeah. And um, it's just been a, ver- a very healthy environment for Jasmine to be rather than me putting her in daycare. And I, I realised I had a choice. I can move home and, you know, build a business. Yeah. So that's what I did. I I had got my teeth into something that really helped me through this hard time, and that was building a business called Me Mini. So it's a clothing label for babies. Yeah. And it was all about inspirational messages. Okay. So love life, treasure moments love is all you need I just had this passion to share when I was going through divorce and losing my mum of uplifting myself because I used to always be known as the positive person traveling the world that yeah Harley always lands on her feet you know she has this great positive attitude that uplifts people and um things just seem to work out for her so I had to pull on those strengths again because I went down um mm. and I experienced the other side of I, I haven't labelled it depression, but I'm sure I've been through that, through even since the divorce, like I've gone through other unhealthy relationships that I attracted into my world after that. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, lots of creative things were born. So the business came from that, the clothing. So you had a clothing, clothing business before your current business. Yes, so me, many. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And a part of that clothing business was the inspirational quotes or the inspirational message. That's how it started. It's yeah. just my other passion is raising people and pointing out the good things in life. So it just naturally happened. Yeah. And then that wasn't enough. I decided to do art. Uh, well, I was painting when I was pregnant, so I took art classes and my grandma, who was 100, she was the artist of the family and I always aspired to do as she did. I'd I'd take a photo in Venice or Hawaii and I'd say, please, can you paint this? And she would. Oh, wow. So now that's what I do. I've got paintings of everything that I capture moments of my daughter. She might be looking out. It's always from behind, looking out, enjoying the moment at the ocean. Yeah. Photograph it, then I need to paint it. So I fell into painting more. And that's when I realised the healing part of it and what mindfulness was all about because mindfulness is about just being in the present moment and all your focus and attention is doing something which takes you away from stress and anxiety or depression. Um, yeah. So I did these amazing, big, beautiful canvases and that was my healing. Yeah, nice. So my daughter would come in and when she would join me and pick up a paintbrush or a, a pencil, we connected more in the moment. It was just this beautiful ambiance it's just then feeling yeah. even I'd have meditation background music playing I still do and we just connect and we can have lovely conversations nice um and so what the other thing that inspired me with my first book was Louise Hay who owns Hay House Publishing yes Louise Hay has sold you know her billions of books and all about affirmations and um about looking within. And so I started this personal development journey since my mum died and divorce happened. I looked totally within, what have I done to attract this? And I love positive psychology. It's another um, big art and positive psychology are my go-tos. I love them. So I seek to help kinesiologists, psychologists, counsellors, give me all the information I need. A lot of books were read, a lot of research which led me to doing my first book, which was a, a mindfulness colouring with affirmations for yeah. kids and adults. Yeah, perfect. And your story is what I love the most is because you went through so much and you've really come out the other side in a more healthier space, if I can say, but you're also using that healthier space to inspire others to do the same. Like just hearing your story is should be inspiration enough. Really, yeah. Yeah, because the question that came to my mind when you were saying, you know, most people, you know, just go through grief you know, and that's what they experience. Some people go through divorce and that's what they experience. But for you, you will experience both of them at the same time. So what kind of yeah. thoughts were running through your mind at that time or what was, you know, what were some challenges that you had for yourself to remain positive at that time? Well, I think the first questions you ask yourself is why me, you know, yeah. how this happened and everything. 
Um, and then Louise Hay really taught me that you are all about your own thoughts, your own yeah. self worth, your own um, your th- your thoughts and your words are creating your life and your future. So yeah. when you say I'm not good enough, you actually start believing I'm not good enough, yeah. um, or I'm not. I can't do that. You know, it's just a natural fear thing that humans first say. But, yeah, yeah, I learned a lot from You Can Heal Your Life through her book and that's why my book, I thought, I need to get children to understand affirmations and the power of their words and thoughts is is so paramount that I didn't know when I was younger. So I talk about my life being fantastic, but then there was also the self-doubt, that inner critic from little comments that we might have from our childhood. We all have them. And you don't realise they come out later in your adult years. Yeah. So that's why I kind of wanted to get into kids' headspace first and tr- and parents to connect them at the same time. Yeah. So okay. the tools I use is creativity. Sorry, I just got off the beaten track there, but creativity. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's answered perfectly because what's okay. running through my mind is, yes, the tools are creativity and you've been inspired by Louise Hay. Now, most people in my industry, you know, the health and wellness space, you know, she is an icon. We know, you know, when you say yeah. Lu- Louise Hay, they know in instant, um, in an instant that, you know, who that person is. But not many people do know Louise Hayes. Now, well, Gabby Bernstein's the new modern Louise Hayes. Uh, yes, yes, Gabby Bernstein. She's absolutely fabulous. And you're right, yes. she is the new modern uh, Actually, Louise Hayes. Actually, Louise Hay called her that. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, okay. The, the next, well, somebody did, yeah, um, Wayne Dyer, yeah. Yeah, perfect. But it's not like you're taking Louise's words and putting them on your artwork. These no. affirmations are your own. So where's the inspiration that comes for these affirmations to combine with your artwork? Um, well, they came from my own experiences. Yeah. Just my own research and observations and learning like lessons just about being grateful and not being grateful and how that turns your world around. So, for example, I'm completely blessed living where I live with my dad, but there are challenges with that too because who would have thought you're going to bring up your child as a single mum? So then you have to then really every day think about but look at what you've got rather than what you don't have. You know, you see everyone on Facebook travelling with their families and and that can get you depressed. Yeah. But then you have to look away and go, yeah, but look at how lucky I am and it's not always as great as it looks on Facebook. That's right. So I just had to be very aware of my own mindset um, by using those affirmations in the morning and just um, mindfulness brings awareness to your thoughts. Yes. So I would do even just 10 minutes meditation on an app, which I highly recommend, Headspace or Smiling Minds. Yeah. Um, just to get that quietness in your mind and then just awareness is your first thing. So then notice, okay, that story keeps playing over in my mind. Uh, It's my choice to turn that one off, float it away and replace it with a more positive one. So I guess I'm quite passionate that I wish everyone knew that. (laughs) And that's why I do this show as well so that everyone knows that when you are in a challenging spot, There is ways around it. There is ways to lift you up out of it. You can stay there as long as you want that challenging spot, but there is going to be ways or a moment in time where it is time to flip the switch. And like you said, just be aware of the stories that you are telling yourself and having that awareness to yeah. make the change. Now, I've actually got a few of your products. I've got the the pictures. So the two affirmations that I've got, I've got, I believe in me and my dreams are coming true. Now, yeah. those aren't the only two affirmations that you do, but what's your go-to affirmation to, um, to bring awareness to yourself, but also to help you kind of flip you out of your funk? Like what's your main go-to affirmation? Um, I am worthy of success. I am worthy of love. I am loved. Yeah, I'm nice. enough. You know, yeah. I'm good enough just as I am. Um, I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I think some of us get caught up in comparison. So hence I've made some artworks about I am beautifully unique. Yes. Or no. I am unique. Um, yeah, that would be my main things is just to always believe in myself. My biggest passion is that the only person that can stop you is you. Yes. So um, self-sabotage, procrastination is actually 
um, self-sabotaging. Yes, definitely. People don't realise that. No. So when we procrastinate, we're actually just not thinking we're quite worthy to receive that success or give that a go. Yes. So I'm very mindful that I need to power through those old behavioural patterns that I've got myself. Yeah. Um, to launch myself more and keep creating and which it's all coming off, you know. I've got a publisher now that wants to sign me. It's my biggest dream. So yeah. just keep going, keep being determined and keep believing in yourself. Yeah. That's what you have to keep telling yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why we connect really well. You've got that never give up attitude in a way like, yes, you might hear it a few roadblocks, but you – Keep going because get um, back on it. Yeah, yeah. Because you were telling me about your how you actually publish the books that you do have. You actually self publish them. You didn't do them via publisher. So no. So tell us so, how you kept going there. So I self published this one. So mindfulness coloring with affirmations. Yes. There's an eye in the back, um, and I just I don't know how I just learnt. I just researched. I just worked out how to get it up onto Amazon and psychologists actually endorsed this book for mental health and wellness all around mindfulness um, and connection for parents yeah. to connect with their children. So it's very much designed for that. Um, and I, I don't know. I just I had a graphic designer that helped digitally trace all of my artwork sketches. Yes. It took me a year to do this, but I did do it every second weekend when I didn't have my daughter because I have her pretty much full time. Yeah. Um, and I guess I just don't know I, what the answer is. I just didn't stop. I just kept learning how to do it and get in my little zen state of drawing and I just loved it. Yeah, perfect. It healed me. <laughs> yeah, I love it and I love it. And it's uh, great to see it's – I think it's passion and drive and that inner knowing that it is going to work kind of thing. So yeah. I know that for me it is that the passion, the drive and the inner knowing that, yep, this is what I'm meant to be doing or it is going to transpire into something. So it's absolutely yeah. fabulous. I think I said that to you. I went and got the part-time job three days a week for a year, which funded yeah. my new next venture, which was the superpowers, yes. which was brilliant and I was so grateful and I had to keep practising how grateful I was for that job because yes. it really was the perfect single mum in between school hour job. But after a while I started to – it was destroying my soul because yeah. it was taking me away from my passion and my purpose, which is to help people through the story I'm telling you and everything I do I merge – positivity with creativity, books, artwork for walls or for affirmation cards. Yeah. So that's what I have to keep doing. I can't stop. <laughs> yeah, no. And I, look, if I can say don't stop because this, I think the world needs it right now. Yeah. I'm going to flip it over just a bit because I want to ask, you mentioned that these books, your affirmations, your activities that you do, they're good for adults, but they're also good for children as well. So why these activities or why is it good for children to start practicing mindfulness now? Well, mindfulness and growth mindset is becoming hopefully the norm they're trying to get it into yeah. the school curriculum but into a lot of wellness programs within the schools around the world yeah. so i've also trained in mindfulness facilitating through mindful schools in the u.s yes so nice. i have a fair bit of knowledge about what little fun but creative mindfulness activities you can do with children yeah. just to help them become more aware um and so that that is one way to get that awareness into children is making it fun and through creativity yeah. Um, in fact, I've now created lesson plans to go with my affirmation cards so that the kids can, can feel what each, well, it's superpowers I haven't talked about yet, but the yeah. superpower card deck that I did of affirmations, Yes, that is um, a way to get children to actually feel what it's like to be kind or gratitude or yeah. uh, there's 36 superpowers. So there's a lot that you, I think the best way for a child to learn it is to feel it. Yeah. To practice it every day or? Well, gratitude, like actually point out when they're grateful how they're feeling or when mm. they did the act of kindness, how that made them feel and the repercussion of what happened around them. So how did the people around them treat them back? Whereas mm. if you were unkind or not grateful, how did you feel inside? Yeah. Um, and then how did everybody react around you? Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm trying to uh, get my superpower cards with adults to teach children through that way yeah. and through creating their own cards create like creating cards themselves painting drawing whatever 
Yeah. For those that haven't heard of what growth mindset is, because you've mentioned that a couple of times, what is yeah. growth mindset? Yep. Okay. So growth mindset is the buzzword in schools. Yes. And for our generation, it's known as law of the attraction. Yeah. Okay. Okay. True Louise Hay. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> Love um, it. <laughs> It's just funny because I've developed all of this and then suddenly my daughter's coming home with growth mindset and it's what I've done with my cards. Yeah. So growth mindset is a language. I am, I can, I will. Instead yeah. of I can't, I won't, I won't, I'm not going to, you know. So yeah. um, these are my superpower cards that I showed you, but I'll just show you a couple here. I've yeah. put the words I am, I can, I will in pink. It's a bit hard to see, but yeah. I've started every affirmation off with the growth mindset language, I am, I can, I will. Yes. Yeah, um, and talking about why laughter is your superpower. It's something to try and do every day to release those endorphins and yes. um, or the believing is my superpower as you have on your wall with yes. my artwork that matches it. Yeah, um, I yeah, love so that. Oh, go on. <laughs> That's a growth mindset language is just using your words positively and encouragingly so yeah. that they're helpful words, encouraging words, not unhelpful or unencouraging words. Yeah. So those help, helpful growth mindset words are the I can, I will, and the third one is... I am, I can, I will. Yes. Or so, yet. Like I can't do that yet, but I, with effort I can. Yeah, nice. I like um, that. It's just bringing awareness to children's. The way, I mean, all of us mothers know how negative they are. My daughter is the same. They yeah. put themselves down. They don't think they're good enough. And we as mothers, especially mindful mothers, are aware that that creates their confidence, their self-esteem, their um, their life yeah. uh, unfolds because they have this in their little subconscious goes into their brain when they're between one and seven years old. And then they take that later in their life thinking, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not creative or whatever it might be. Yeah. So I've developed these superpowers for all ages too so that you can magically, if you look down here, hang on. Yeah. You can see that I hover my hand. They've got beautiful stars on the other side and then we magically yeah. choose one each day smiling and then we discuss it. It's like a, a conversation starter for um, parents around mindset yeah. and their superpowers yeah i'm going to put a pin in that for a second because if the growth mindset is i can i will i am you mentioned mm -hmm. the opposite is i can't i won't you know uh, there's no way that kind of attitude yeah when i'm we... not i can't i won't yep exactly yeah. so what does that do to a person and what does it to do to a child can i can i ask you that because i want people well, to understand the difference that if you're using words i'm not i can't i won't what kind of growth does that um, create well it just it it makes you feel horrible if you actually become mindful of how yeah. your body and your mood is feeling you'll realize you've played those stories of unhelpful words um, yeah. just by listening to your body and listening to your mood yes. so I will spiral down and have got quite depressed focusing on something that I'm not good at or I don't have enough of or whatever it is but then the next day we talked about that state of mind that you can get by doing a walk, getting those endorphins moving, using yeah. positive words, you know, visualisation. There's so much you can do to keep your mindset up. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's that's what you need to do in the mornings, I think, as well. Yeah. It's just be mindful of your words. It really does create your day, your mood. Yeah, perfect. And that's what I want people to understand because, you know, working as a kinesiologist, the we do have that um, we do have that language that we need to be aware of when we're setting goals with people or setting statements for them to live by. We have to test every word to make sure it's accurate and it's for right. the highest good. So any words like I'm not, I can't, I won't. You that, change it quickly. We change it quickly. So right. I want people to understand those kind of yes. fosterings or uh, statements can really have a long time, a long They're term. not serving you. Exactly. That's the way to describe it. They're not serving you. They're not serving you very well at all. Oh. Um, and we're all guilty of it. Like people don't even realise the, the broken records that are playing over in your mind since you were young. You're not even aware of it. It's yeah. just so familiar. 
and it's always putting yourself down. It's I'm not good enough. There's no way I'm doing that. I couldn't do that. It's just yeah. it's comical, really, when you think about what keeps playing. If you're aware of it, just slam it down and say, no, that's the old me. Yeah. Moving forward, I choose to actually use more positive words, yeah. and that's where I think affirmations and growth mindset come into it. Yeah. Look, you've um... – and I love that. It's like this is the kind of stuff that we never had as kids. Well, I never had as a kid. So having no. that as a kid, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm grateful for every past experience because it's brought me to where I am now. And it kind of makes me drive a little bit harder actually to to achieve those things. True. But kids now are having this awareness. Where do you think they'll end up in like five or ten years? Where do you see them? You know, how do you see them growing up with this kind of oh, mindset? Well, my dream and the way it is looking is it's just a more empowered, mindfully empowered generation is ahead yeah. of us. Okay. And mindfulness and growth mindset is their buzzwords now. You know? yeah. <laughs> and older people don't even get it. But how wonderful that that is finally. Like when I did these cards, there wasn't many around. I had my yeah. head down for another year doing these superpower cards. Yeah. And then I looked up and went, oh, there actually are a few cards out there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, which is beautiful to see. It. It, it. Mine's very unique with all my artwork on it and it's targeted to all ages. Whereas some people will do it for one specific age and it's not so much for the family. But, you know, it's out there and it's really great to see. Yeah. Um, I just think meditation is another great thing. I would like to see families doing more in this yeah. isolation time. Just yeah. 10 minutes, just an app. My daughter will listen to it. She's a bit over it now because I've done it for so long. But yeah, well, that's, you know, yeah, <laughs> they retaliate against their mothers sometimes. Oh, I think it's with every mother-daughter relationship. We're like, Thank you. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was going to say is, you know, you've worked with quite a few um, kids. Even you know, you were just mentioning before this call, you were doing a workshop with a couple of kids virtually. Um, about mindfulness and about, you know, the the cards that you do have. Do mm. kids gravitate to this kind of learning? Do they gravitate towards, you know, these positive affirmations? Are they getting it quickly or is it taking some time for them to understand? Look, sometimes I doubt myself with that, good questions, and then I think, gee, I've planted the seed in Jasmine and then when I least expect it down the track, she'll grab that um that one there that I believe in me and put yeah. it right in front of me. <laughs> you still think that I'm doubting myself. But so the answer is I think you're planting the seed and, and watch it flourish later. They're, they're tools that maybe we're teaching our children that you might not see it straight away, but they will know it to go to when they're older because it's not foreign like yeah. it would be to you and me. Yeah. Um, and also I have to say with my superpower cards, because of we make it fun, I know a lot of families that do this, you're hovering over with your eyes shut. What am I going to pick? That's yeah. fun. Yeah. You know, they're all like, oh, it's my turn, mummy. I'm doing it. So we fight over who's doing it in the morning. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll get the creativity one. Mummy, I'm so not creative. There's no mm. way I'm creative. Yeah. Why did she pick three times out of the shuffle deck? Yeah. Creativity keeps coming up for her. And so she ran off and said, that's spooky, mummy. <laughs> so we make it, you know, we, you just make it fun and it's just a, it's a subtle way of having a conversation around why smiling is contagious yeah. and why it's important to, you know, smile and make someone say it's an act of kindness or yeah. a kindness card or, you know, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. Talk about it. Well, I'm going to ask you that question if you don't mind because I think it's a fabulous question because we don't realise how powerful a smile is or how quickly it can change our mood just by smiling. So yeah. why is it so important to smile or, you know, just smile? It's, connect it's connection. Yes. It's human nature to connect and that's why everybody is struggling, especially an, an extrovert. I'm obviously more of an introvert because I could isolate here forever and just keep painting and writing and creating. Yeah. Hence, I want people to learn that that's a tool they need to do now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that's, it's about that's connection. what sorry, what's I was saying. <laughs> yeah, no, you said it. I asked, you know, what, uh, why you know, smiling is important. And smiling, yeah. So I'll even say it to Jasmine. I'll say, when you smile at a stranger, it is an act of kindness. Yeah. And that, that person might have been having a really bad day and you have no idea what's going on for a person walking down the street. But just that simple smile. 
And I'm much more smiling now through the fear that you're seeing when you're doing your exercise every day yes. and still connecting and you just know that that brightens a human up. It's just human nature, right? Yeah, absolutely. It is human nature for us to be connected. Um, um, and everything you do, really, when you're kind, hopefully that comes back to you. When yeah. you're grateful, they're more grateful for you. So. Yeah. Again, my superpowers, it says this is contagious, I pass it on. Whatever yeah. you do, what you put out, you get back. Yeah, perfect. Look, we're going to talk about um, your superpowers in just a second. We're also going to talk about, you know, fostering more of that acts of kindness and gratitude. Um, yeah. Firstly, I just want to um, say, guys, you are listening to Radio Northern Beaches 88.7 and 90.3 FM. These are the Hummingbird Talks. My name's Melissa. We happen every Wednesday and each week we have different guests on, um, you know, speaking about different topics of health and wellness and spirituality. And the aims of the show is to educate and inspire the everyday person so that they can um, enjoy this life of self-awareness, wholeness and complete, uh, completeness on this journey we call life. Now, guys, you can hear us on the radio, but you can also hear us on the website, which is rnb.org.au. And I just want to quickly say a few shout out to some friends. I did it a couple of weeks ago, but I'm going to do it again because I absolutely love shouting out to friends. And this is a way of connection, um, letting know that people are out there. So we've got Ellis Hurst and Greg Hurst. Um, so a shout out to them. Sonia Foley. We've got Anne Tomlin, um, Pamela Edmonds. Andrew Rothwell, Julie Hodgson, and James Maguire. So a shout out to some R&B friends. These guys are friends of the radio station, so we do want to make some connection there with them. But guys, on my show today, I've had the beautiful Kylie Johnson. She's the founder of Kylie Johnson Art. She's created so many different artworks, canvases, cards, colouring books, and their activities, lesson plans. They're all activities for all ages. But the main thing with her cards and with her activities, it's to foster a healthy mental well, um, mental health and a healthy well-being. So it's all about fostering a growth mindset, especially for kids to have that growth mindset. So in the half an hour that we've been here, we've just been talking about those activities. We've been talking about growth mindset and we've actually just uh, been talking about why it's important to smile because it's all about connection and we do need connection as well. Now, Kylie, I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to ask you, you know, you've mentioned a couple of times about these superpowers that um, you've created or a card, you know, a deck of cards with all these different superpowers. Now, we're not talking about the superpowers that we see in, you know, um, animations or in the movies. These are a different kind of superpowers. So explain some of these superpowers that you've created. Well, I think if anyone has gone through personal development and a healing kind of journey as adults, you understand what the word power is. So having your own power is believing in yourself and not letting your own power yeah. um, down. So that's kind of where I came up with the superpower word is the 36 superpowers that I've created are from my own life experiences mm -hmm. and a lot of research psychologists that have endorsed my book as well. Um, and just positive psychology. So, yeah, a lot of it comes from own experiences, most importantly, which is yeah. the courage. Yes. Sharing your story. Yes. yes. Determination was one my late mother used to say I was very determined. Yeah. Was, that was always her big thing. Whatever you do, you'll do it because you're so determined yeah. in life. Um, confidence. I mean, I'm just looking at a bunch of my cards. Kindness is... Kindness and gratitude, I think, are the most important things. Yeah. Um, because when you are kind, you, and my father, I mean, he is a world, world, words of wisdom my whole life, really, yeah. and it is all about what you give, you get back. So if mm. someone's triggered me, um, you know, from something that makes me react, he's always the first to point out about, but it doesn't hurt to be kind. You don't need to be rude. You know, kindness is the most powerful superpower you can have because it comes back to you. Yes, that's right. That's... It's with all the social media and bullying that goes on. Yes. It's a big passion of mine is about that. That superpower is about being kind. Yeah. Um, what you do to others, you get back. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 
it's just there's 36 of them, but there is my daughter and other people that have come up with other um, superpowers that I should have included. So maybe my next card deck. Yes. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's in the work, but I love those superpowers. So you've mentioned courage, you've mentioned kindness, you've mentioned gratitude, you've re- mentioned determination. Now, obviously, you know, out of 36, those are just a couple that you've done, but. Forgiveness, yep. Yeah, forgiveness. Oh, my God, that is a. That's a big one, right? That's a big one. Tell us about your idea of forgiveness because Uh, I tried to, um, like, I understand it because uh, most people understand it as you've got to forgive so that you can move forward but also so you can let go. Oh, maybe I can't articulate it, but how about you articulate this? Yeah. (laughs) I think forgiveness is a huge, powerful one. And, again, it's what my father pointed out to me. So when I was going through divorce and there's obviously a lot of emotion and heartache for anybody, like no one gets what it's like until you go through it. It's not fun. Um, But he helped me to understand removing all the emotion out of it and actually, again, being grateful for what, I had from that marriage and I have this beautiful daughter. And then forgiveness was the big one. He wasn't coping so well or being so kind, I should say, toward me. So I realised that being unkind back was only going to create more unkindness. So trying to always be kind and grateful and forgive. Um, And I think if you look at somebody's journey and you understand where they've come from, maybe they've learnt that behaviour somewhere else, you know. Maybe they're doing the best that they can and that's their own thing going on inside that you'll never know you you can you can forgive people easier if you actually understand that they've got their own journey and their own set of behaviors they've been taught throughout their life and that's what got me through that I actually in some way you can feel sorry for people and then forgive them you know you feel love and kindness towards them and think okay well you know I forgive you for that and you Mm. release that and oh my gosh I have no bitterness no pain absolutely move on so much easier when you forgive i can't it's drinking it's what's that quote um if if you don't forgive someone it's like swallowing poison Poison, yes and expecting the other one to die yes literally that is how it is yeah (laughs) and i've seen close people to me um that don't understand the power of forgiveness yeah and i do see their turmoil and oh, it just eats them inside. It's not good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I do understand firsthand the power of forgiveness releases pain for you. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you don't forget or that that person was wrong, but you, you just, I forgive you and I send you love and kindness. Yeah, perfect. That's a beautiful affirmation. Yes. Well, there you go. There's your next uh, canvas. <laughs> but um, I was going to say, like, what you're saying, yes, forgiveness is necessary. But can I ask you, did it happen overnight that you suddenly had all of this forgiveness for your ex-husband or, you know? Um, I think because I'm thirsty for positive psychology, like I went to psychologists, counsellors, my father, I had a lot of support because I chose that. Yes. I, I want to know more and, and not I'm not one that likes to point the finger at the person. I'll look within and go, well, what could I have done better or yeah. learn from that mistake, which is in my cards as well. Yes. Um, yeah, so that's that's my experience with it. Yeah. Perfect. Because I do want to kind of say that sometimes, yes, forgiveness can happen like in an instant, but other times it might take a bit to to get there. It's not a sudden release. No, I understand. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And look, another great way is paint. (laughs) Yeah. I've had some other things where I was triggered and I was, you know, not forgiving somebody, but I seem to paint beautiful pieces when I'm upset or angry or, and then go to mindfulness go to do do something mindful which is creativity to help you calm down before you speak to that person perhaps sleep yeah. on it it's always another one my dad's told me never ever act with emotion just sleep on it calm down for a while and talk and you come from a more forgiving place yeah nice your dad sounds like a very inspirational man. <laughs> he, he is, yeah. I'll give him some credit. Yes. But not to mention my mum. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, I, you mentioned that with the connection uh, again, like in the forgiveness, 
with those things in mind and creativity as well, you know, mentioning that, you know, painting is a great way for connection. It's a great way for creativity. What is it about being in that creative space that fosters more connection or that kind of allows it more to happen? Well, I think I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but that's why the book was made because not everyone paints and not everyone thinks they're a good drawer. Yeah. But if that's fine, then go get this book and you can mindfully colour in and you'll notice I've done some workshops with a teacher actually where she's very passionate about the same thing. And what we pointed out to the children whilst they were painting and we did a short little mindfulness meditation um, was the creative flow that you become in. It's like a zone. It's like a... It's just, it's a mindfulness activity. You're focusing all your attention in that one spot, like I mentioned. So um, creativity is an outlet that really, um, well, it was endorsed. It's endorsed by uh, by psychologists for anxiety, stress, and depression. It relieves that. It assists that. It assists mental health to do anything creative. Now, my go-to was painting, drawing, writing, and designing, and building a business. Mostly it's painting, obviously. But for other people, it can be gardening. That's creative. Yes, it's it is. creating the beautiful home you've done. Like, oh, what can I do to that wall? Your mind is creative. We're all creative. Yeah. This is a, a lot of people say, oh, I'm so not creative. So they don't try. Yeah. Anyone can draw. Anyone can paint. Just do the step-by-step tutorials on YouTube, which my daughter has been doing. Yeah. Mind-blowing. Yes, um, okay. Anyone can learn. It's actually not that hard. You can learn. Yeah. Um, but just remove the judgment and do something else creative, you know, this um, crafts, just doing any kind of arts and crafts. So I do workshops with children with arts and crafts. So mm. let them just create themselves. Don't do a step by step. Create from your heart when you're young. Yeah. Um, and that's what adults should be doing as if we were still young without that judgment. Yeah. Why do you think we do have that judgment? Because, you know, as you mentioned, you know, we go, I can't paint, I can't draw. And, you know, I've had some of those thoughts as well. You know, I'm not the best painter, but, you know, it's fun to do kind of thing. It's fun to do. So just do something fun. We just move the judgment and go, you know what, I'm going to put on some nice background music. Even out in nature, if you've got a balcony or outside, like I'm blessed where I am, of course, with my studio. But it's all about how you set the scene so that beautiful soft music get rid of all your clutter and just do something creative like that's why I did the coloring book if it's that hard and you'll notice the the relief that you get from your mind that's just busy I mean there's 70,000 thoughts that float around in our mind every day I tell that to kids with a glitter jar yeah (laughs) I've got this glitter jar that I show well that's wow 70,000 thoughts yeah yep well, that's a good example, the glitter jar to really explain it because we are having that many thoughts. And imagine if yep. we listen to every one of those thoughts and imagine yep. if we, you know, what kind of thoughts do run through our minds. So That's it. So the, there is ways to calm those thoughts. And like I said, with the mindfulness activities, you, that you can be doing arts, crafts, painting, drawing, craft, like um, gardening, Lego. Yes. My daughter will spend four hours with Lego. I mean, I hate Lego. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, mind, that's a mindfulness activity right there. Yes. Well, it's... <laughs> find your go-to. You're probably doing it without cooking, baking. Hello? Yeah. Not great on that. Yeah. But how many mothers do that? Well, they get some relief and, and calm. They just need to be aware that what they're doing is actually bringing calm and relief. So do that more. Yeah. Perfect. And I love exactly what you're saying because I think those activities going into that creative space, whether it's painting or whether it's cooking or gardening or Lego, it's so... Or sport, kicking a ball around, you know, practicing a ball or whatever it is. It's something that takes your mind into the present moment and it stops thinking about everything else. That's your go-to, especially in isolation. Yeah, and in a way it's a form of meditation, isn't it? Because that's what meditation does. It's about slowing down the mind and keeping in that yep. present moment. Well, when we focus, we're productive and that's a, that's at the end of the day, like anyone that's an entrepreneur or, you know, you've, you've ticked a few things off and you actually had this focused amount of time, which I just live for, yeah. um, for a whole day, oh, you walk out feeling fantastic because yes. you focused without being distracted all day. 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, this There's is all what, different ways. Yeah, this is why I love connecting with you, Kylie, because you share the most amazing things, and you don't have to be, you know, a spiritualist. You don't have to be a coach. You don't have to be a wellness practitioner. It's coming straight from your heart, and it's coming straight from your experiences. Yeah, experiences. So I absolutely love that, and I love your story. Can I ask you, you? You're welcome. Um, if I can ask you, with the attitude of gratitude, you seem to practice that quite a lot. When we talk about the attitude of gratitude, why is it that you are practicing it constantly? Um, yeah, well, because like I said, when I was living that wonderful life and I realised that I was so grateful for everything that ever happened to me, that more kept happening. Yeah, okay, great. It was this abundant life, this abundant mindset. I didn't even know I was just naturally in at age 25. Just, um, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. So um, because I know that I've been in that mindset before and I know now because my life changed and a single mom and, you know, hard to have a partner and um, an unhealthy relationship that wasn't great for my confidence. There's all these things that sort of damaged that. Yeah. So. I now know that practicing, and you'll, there's books on it. I mean, my gosh, so anybody that's in this this personal development space will tell you. I mean, even out of the Bible, if you're religious, gratitude is your biggest superpower. Yeah, it seriously, is like, okay, Tony Robbins. Yes, love who him. is a business <laughs> life coach. Billions of people follow him in in the US. For those that don't know him, yeah, the power, the hour of power. Yes. Um. Okay. So you hear. All entrepreneurs and anyone that's sort of going somewhere in life or getting out of uh, abuse or depression or anxiety or whatever the horrible stories that we all have our own journey. Yeah. Um, they all talk about this power hour. First thing in the morning, it might be five or six in the morning, gratitude comes into it. Yeah. Journaling gratitude, just write five to ten times, five, even two, but five to ten things you're grateful for each morning. Yeah, perfect. Journal down your thoughts, write down what you want to be doing, some goals or whatever, even the night before. But the gratitude for um, – so it's 20 minutes exercise, so moving your body so that you get into the right state. Yes. That's why it's my uh, non-negotiable. I have to go and walk. I have got the steep hill in nature, mindfulness again, noticing all the sounds. So you do 20 minutes of that, 20 minutes of either meditation or prayer whatever is your thing, but it's just sitting still and listening to your own answers of what you might need to hear that day. Yeah, um, yeah so 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of prayer and affirmation. Oh, and 20 minutes of listening to something that is positive. Okay. So it might be a podcast. It yeah. might be a book that you're reading. Just read or, or something to absorb into your brain for 20 minutes Yeah, that's positive and uplifting and encouraging you. Yeah. There's your hour. What a great start. Oh, my gosh, I'm on fire when I do that. Yeah, perfect. And you're doing it every morning? Or every... Do you know, I do do it every morning, but there are things in life that obviously push you off that, which is not an excuse. You should just get up earlier, but yeah. we're all human and I don't. But I I see the difference. Yeah. So you notice a huge difference when you do that hour of power in the morning, and <laughs> oh, how your day goes. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah, Big difference. it's absolutely imperative for my headspace and my productivity the next, on that day. Yeah, so it's a bit. I think you were saying the same, right, that you yeah. exercise and. Yeah, well, for me, the non-negotiable is the exercise. I might not do it every day, but every second day it has to be some form of um, movement, some form of, yeah. um, you know, physicality. But also meditation is a, um, a big one for me. Um, 10 or 20 minutes. 10, 20 minutes. Um, yep. Just, you know, it doesn't have to be at a set time in the day, but as long as I yep. do it throughout the day, just to, like you said, yep. with that glitter jar, the calming of the mind, you know, yep. it just to really calm it, down. calm it down. For me, my big go-to is essential oils. That's part of the meditation. That's part of the, the gratitude. That's part of, you know, putting me in that state of mind. As brings well. you into a into that present moment, yeah. The yeah. Oils is a huge one, I know. Yeah. That, um, you can even just be spraying it or putting drops on your bed. My daughter loves that, actually. Um, I've got one called Calm Kids, so no, yeah. I totally relate to that as well. It brings you into a more, when you think about it, a day spa. 
Yes. That beautiful smell of oils. You think, ah, oh, I'm here to relax. Yeah. Why not do that every day at home? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So there is bits. I don't actually have that hour, hour set in the morning, but okay. there is that hour of, you know, morning routine to help me set up my day to help yes. me be that clear person that I need to be, you know, you know, depending on the activities that I do. Yeah, I just think it's so important that people realise that, and they're, look, they're already doing it. A lot of people are already doing the exercise. Yeah. But just to be mindful, see the difference when you yeah. do and when you don't. Yeah. And definitely practice gratitude. Yeah. Every uh, time you're spiralling down in a bad mood, what are you thinking about? Yeah. What were you focusing on? Was it what you don't want? You'll get more of that. Yeah. Well, focus on what you already do have. I'm always telling my daughter that, you know, it's planting the seed all the time. Focus on what you have now. Yeah. You know, not what you want later. It's great to dream, but yes. just, yeah, it flourishes more of what you want. Yeah, absolutely. I think the last question I, I kind of want to ask you is that intention, like a lot of in our health and wellness space, we speak about intention. So do you think that goes hand in hand with the gratitude or with the hour of power? Do you set an intention for that? Oh, hour? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Setting an intention, um, which is goals for the morning or the, yeah. the day or the week or the year. I'm very big about that. In fact, I've got a card in here, which is manifestation. Okay. So yeah. Um, setting an intention of what I want to do. And, gosh, you feel so much better when you just set small goals yes. and you actually achieve them. My problem is I have this to-do list that's ginormous and then you'll you'll feel crumbled at the end, like I didn't do anything because I tried to do a bit of everything. Yeah. So I've learned myself. I see life coaches that talk about it. I've done a lot of research. I get it. Like, yes, yeah. you need to just do one task at a time, put three important ones on your list yeah. Um, and especially in this day with everybody isolating, they've got to set boundaries with the children of, okay, this is what my go-to is this morning. Yeah. You'll have mummy at this time. We'll do the homeschooling. Just set your boundaries, set your routines. It's just healthy yeah. for your mindset, for everybody. Yeah, perfect. Well, I want to kind of tie the three in together because we just spoke about intention. It gives us awareness. It kind of gives us a direction with our gratitude and that's what we've been speaking about having that attitude of gratitude but you've actually just pulled out that manifestation card as one of the superpowers so explain the manifestation card a bit more and why it's considered a superpower because people don't realize but what you visualize and think about can come about yeah. we're born we are born with the gift of visualizing a dream is something your heart's making i mean i've made a canvas um of that <laughs> yeah. a dream is a wish that your heart makes and that is part of visualization yeah. so for example i visualized that i was going to model in hong kong i had no idea how i'd get there i absolutely visualized where i'd be um and it all happened basically yeah and perfect. that happened all the time throughout my life i visualized i'd work for a homeware company i visualized i'd live in london like i just thought about it and did it um there is one thing else I will say about visualisation is vision boards. Yes. So I should have mentioned this actually. When I divorced and my whole life was turned upside down, I had to go back to being Kylie. What does Kylie want? Yeah. A psychologist stroke health coach. I did a Skype call with her actually in New Zealand and spent a fair bit of money to do it. Yeah. She inspired me to do a vision board. Okay. Um, and she said, you've already done it. The power of your visualisation is manifesting your life. You already know how to do that. Yeah. You of all people with what you've accomplished at your age. Now you just need to pull from that that you used to do, like I said, the gratitude. Yeah. Um, but the vision board really got clarity for me. It It's actually something I'm going to be putting into my business, so stay tuned. Yeah, good. Um, but, yeah, vision boards are quite a powerful tool to help visualisation and manifesting your dreams, like dare to dream what yeah. you really want, get clear about what you want yeah. and then set those goals to get there. Yeah, perfect. Do the visualisation, um, you know, uh, my statement is visualisation kind of tells your brain that it's true or it's actually happened or it's actually happening and it kind of programs your mind that yep this is the vision this is what's happening is that the what you mean by visualizing and helping it manifest is just like telling your brain this is true well yes i mean 
that's that's why you can be doing um, via a meditation. So if you shut your eyes, which I did as a workshop the other day with kids, just shutting your eyes for 10 minutes and visualising your happy place being in nature, for example. Yeah. This is just an example. And the kids started thinking about mines on the snow on the mountains, mines at the park down there, and then they drew it. So that just shows you your visualizing what you want to come true and then they drew it yeah so no. you you do a vision board go through pinterest google get photos magazines place all the things that you love and it's like a reminder to keep that vision powerful in your mind yeah. just up on your wall or in your wardrobe wherever you are going to see it yeah nice yes um yeah visualization is very important and manifesting comes from that yeah perfect Kylie, I've absolutely loved our chat today because we've <laughs> gone through so much and it's exactly what people need to hear right now. So during this time of isolation and restriction, and most of us are finding it difficult and same here, I'm finding it difficult as well. We do need to step into that creative power, which you've been saying, and creativity can be painting and can be writing, it can be journaling but it yep. also can be gardening. It can be cooking, baking, cooking <laughs> setting up your home, decluttering is part yes. of, of the creativity. But Very important. With all of that as well is that it's fostering a healthy mindset as well. So we've been yep. talking about growth mindset. So using words like I can, I will, I am, yep. and then just add the words to complete that statement. So I think you will. If you believe it. Yeah. already happening i am successful or i am creative you know you, you're talking yourself into it until it happens really, yeah it's what an affirmation can be yeah absolutely and i think what kylie means by talking into it you've mentioned the subconscious mind and i work with the subconscious mind and we know our subconscious mind is about keeping us safe it's got some old programming in it that thinks it's you know safe but yeah you know to do an artwork that might not, your brain might not think it's safe. So you want to do the artwork. So by telling yourself, I am creative, I am a painter, I am having this artwork completed, it's kind of oh. override, overriding the system, isn't it? Absolutely. When I did art classes, I was surrounded in artists. And I, yeah. do you know how I felt? Like yeah. an idiot, like amateur. <laughs> yeah. But she gave me confidence. She's like, but your grandma is a 100-year-old. You know, she's the artist. And look what you've already done. So she fed me that little bit of confidence. Yeah. And I heard myself doubt coming in. Yeah. Who are you to think you can do this? Yeah. But I kept pushing through it. Yeah, perfect. And that's what I mean. Never give up attitude is yeah. absolutely <laughs> amazing. Pushed right through it. And look where she's ended up. She's created a beautiful business called Kylie Johnson Art. So, guys, check it out. It's kyliejohnsonart.com.au. Beautiful no, art. No, no AU. Oh, sorry. <laughs> KylieJohnsonArt.com. Kylie .com. Beautiful artwork that really empowers the soul, I will say, and empowers anyone of all ages. So, Kylie, thank you so much for being here with me. Hopefully you've yeah, had you're some welcome. fun. Um, I've definitely felt inspired, and your dad sounds like an inspirational man, so we all have nice. to meet him at one point. Um, Coming along now, actually. Yep. Yeah. What, what I will say is that the wellness family connection packs are all on my website too, which lots of households are ordering at the moment. So you've got your colouring in book to do with your children yeah. and reconnect in the moment. You've got your superpowers to draw every day and subtly talk about their strengths. Yes, superpowers. good. Yes. And superpowers and we mean by courage, determination, manifesting, gratitude and kindness. It's not the superpowers you find on the cartoons or That's um, it. or in Start the, the movies. conversation with the kids and be subtle reminders to yourself. <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. Well, guys, thank no, thank you for, for being on. I really appreciate you um, being here with me. We actually just, uh, we actually connected at the Mind Body Spirit Festival and it was an instant connection. So I yes. do, I am very Lovely thankful. To meet you. Yeah. <laughs> It was so nice to meet you and I do thank you for that connection and thank you for being on. Um, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you for listening to the Hummingbird Talks. My name is Melissa. We happen every Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I've got the beautiful Emma Kirkwood. She is a business coach um, from the local um, business network. So she helps many small to medium businesses thrive um, 
you know, especially in these times, she's actually helping them thrive and still be successful as well. So this time shouldn't slow us down. Like Kylie said, let's be creative in this time. Let's use this time for good, for connection. And we can do that through creativity. So guys, I will see you next Wednesday at 11 a.m. And make sure you stay safe and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Thank you. Is it done? Over and out. <laughs> okay. Still recording.